Hello, boys and girls. So, no broadcaster, podcaster, no broadcaster, audio gonna go all the way down to 5%, 6%, whatever, game sound goes all the way up, no music, unit speech goes to, what did I used to be? 50%, I think. I don't know. Wasting a lot of time, I think I'm gonna probably <coughs> cut this section out, most likely. Alchemist, I heard in the back, that's probably because I saw Naga. Yeah, there's the response to Naga as the alchemist. So what I want to do is, this is a live game, go live, yes. This is a live game, I believe this is a third game, OG versus Faceless. I have not seen any of the major apart from the first um, series, literally the first series of the main event, because I was moving and whatnot. But what I want to do is, uh, this is probably just gone, I'm probably going to do the draft all over again for another another series. What is the next series? Let me just... Quickly have a look what the next series is. It's Vici, Vici Jr. versus VP. I don't know anything about either of those two teams, so I'm probably going to go and do the draft for the next one, which is EG versus SG something. I don't know what that is, but uh, I know EG, so I know I'll draft a court from the side of EG. But let's let's do it from this side, right? So they ban Abaddon and Timber. Timber, obviously, because he's really good against dealing with Naga. But what I want to do is similar to the what would I do in that hero situation, what would I do in the drafting? I'm horrible at drafting, but I just wanna just wanna like try to figure out or try to see how I would draft. <laughs> I'm, I'm wasting too much time. Uh, how I would draft in these people's positions, um, <clears throat> and how I can improve my drafting, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and maybe uh, try to explain to myself a little bit. You know. I don't know. Let's 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 see. Let's see. So, I've drafted Naga and I've drafted Disruptor. Probably when you have a well, when you have a Naga, you want to have uh, other heroes who are space grading heroes. Obviously, Omni is really really strong against Disruptor. Whoever Disruptor is trying to bring back, Omni can just repel him and other things. Like if Omni is not caught in the in the Disruptor ult, you can heal people. You can alter the etc etc. It's really really strong, especially against Naga these days. Omni is being run as off laner. Omni is pretty strong, so it's a really really good ban coming from OG. Now, what would I ban next? I don't know much about Faceless, but going against a Naga lineup, you want to ban mostly early game heroes and heroes who can deal with Naga. Lion is really one good one, but Lion is, you know, comes online. Like his ultimate is his uh, level 25 talent is the one that is extremely good, and that comes on way too late. Otherwise, he has just two spells, which are still pretty good. Two spells, two illusions immediately gone. But I think uh, there are so many other heroes. I think uh, uh, um, Morphling ban is. A little bit better one, but they're not going to pick Morphling because they already have an Alchemist. So what would you ban here? You probably want to ban something, as I said, early game. But then they have an Alchemist, but they also need somebody uh, who can deal, who can who can help Alchemist um, a lot, and probably a hero like Juggernaut or some. I don't know. I would ban a hero like Juggernaut um, or or Ursa or some. Some early game hero who's going to be able to make enough space for Alchemist to become six slotted by the time Naga has her first item before Radiance. <clears throat> Sorry, after Radiance. Uh, what I mean is, like, she's probably going to get Radiance around 18 to 22 minutes, depending on the game. And then her first item, you know, is probably going to, well, she's going to need travels and whatnot. So by the time, by 25, 26 minutes, Alchemist is probably going to be five slotted at the very least, knocking on towers then. Naga's not going to be able to do anything, so Alchemist needs Alchemist's team needs that hero, and there is one of them. Um, this is not really the carry. I mean, to be honest, in our games, in lower level games, we are more afraid of carries rather than anything else, and I think that mentality has to change a little bit because if you notice in their pro plays, pro pro games, they they let the carry do whatever they want, and they focus bans on supports. And off laners so that they can their carry can have an easier easier lane. For example, right now all you want is Naga to be able to have a good lane. And the, look at the four hit all four heroes. <laughs> all four heroes are heroes off lane heroes. You know, even the Omni Knight is off lane hero. Well, in the major at the moment is being played as an off laner, and it's it's uh, it's a good off laner. It's a pretty strong off laner, especially against melee heroes. It's a really really strong off lane. You know, two two repels at level five. Naga's dead. Sorry, not repel. I mean, you know what I mean. Perfect. Pierre 
purifications. Anyway, so coming out from from OG, you've got your No Tail hero. You've got your probably Jerax hero. I'm not sure. I haven't been following the. Oh, oh, Kunkka, 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 Kunkka. So if I am, if I am these guys, who's the off laner? They need the off laner. Need another support, and they need the mid hero. Probably gonna save the mid hero. For actually, they can they can they can go with the mid hero pretty early, um, but yeah, you've got two supports who are gonna make a lot of space. Let's quickly think about what the what they might pick here. Honestly, honestly, um, Clockwork isn't too bad. Neither is Batrider. <clears throat> Both Clockwork and Batrider are pretty good. But you need an off laner who's gonna be able to jungle because there's no way you put an off laner in the lane. Uh, offlaner goes to the lane, offlaner is dead. So as an offlaner, you need somebody who can jungle pretty damn fast. Uh, Axe would... I swear to God! <laughs> I just said Axe wouldn't be too bad. As I said, like you need somebody, anybody, like... Doom is not an offlaner anymore, but you needed somebody who could who could jungle. Axe, uh, Batrider, and... Um, what was the third one I said? I forgot. There's another one that I said, and I completely forgot who it would be, but... Yeah, the Clockwork. Clockwork can also... Clockwork can't jungle that well. So yeah, Axe and Batrider were the only ones. And of course they chose Axe. They don't have a lot of um, AoE stuns at the moment. So I do expect them to pick up another AoE stun. Or just a single card. A stun. They need a stun. Um, which is going to have to pick another hero, right? So they can, they can look to pick a mid hero right now. The mid hero needs to be able to survive the rotational ganks from this guy. But... Essentially, it's not that big a threat. Essentially, they have to bring in both Crystal Maiden and Kunkka to be able to kill somebody because Alchemist doesn't kill anybody. <clears throat> and Kunkka can't kill anybody until Kunkka is level 6. Ooh, Bristleback. That's interesting. Why don't these guys just pick a Nyx right here? And that's it. Get lane 1. Easy lane for Naga. I mean, Nyx would be pretty good against Alchemist as well. Uh, looking at this lineup, it's not doesn't fit too amazingly. Um, what else could they have as what? So this is a mid Naga now, or is it a support Naga, or is it a mid Tim? Oh, it is a mid Terrorblade because mid Terrorblade is pretty damn decent against Alchemist. That's what's happening. This is a mid TV. This is like going going back to um, uh, secret. I think secret, uh, not even secret. It's just Eternal Envy used to do this uh, against Alchemist, and it's pretty damn strong. So there you go. That's your animate. Um, and as we said, it timber like it's easy lane for Terrorblade because as we said, these guys nobody can come and gank him. Their ganking potential is very very limited. Now uh, coming out as a ban. You pr as carry ban, you probably once again, I would say, I would say an early game focused carry. They probably need some stun as well. A little bit of stun, not really too much stun, but a little bit of stun. Um, not like Sven style stun, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know what stun else, what else stun would it be, would it be? but uh, I honestly think Juggernaut or Ursa is really good for faces here. The face is turned to pick, right? Wait, what? No, SOG is turned to pick. Oh! Oh, just turned to ban, so they probably want to uh, ban. They probably want to ban Ursa or Jug. Uh, let's look at this lineup really quickly. They've got this guy. This guy could go carry, but then they don't have an off laner. Uh, so he's not going to go carry. What could they do as a carry? Lifestealer. Lifestealer is not bad. Oh, they ban Pugna? Oh yeah, Pugna is also really good against all of these illusions. Holy shit, man. OG with illusions. Calm the shit down. I think Lion would actually be really good pick here. Okay, so these guys need a... What do they need now? They need another support. And as we said, a stun. I mean, honestly, Nyx looks so good right now. Um, but they need... They need some sustain. They have no sustain. They have no sustain. Elder Titan. That's a... That's, I would never have figured that out because <laughs> who plays Elder Titan? I guess Jarex plays it. So there you go. That's Jarex's hero. And that's Fly's hero then. Yeah. ET. 
ET is so good against this whole lineup because you just shred their armor. And I mean, these, yeah, armor and magic resist, not to mention. And then Naga with her, what's it called? Radiance. This guy with his physical damage just completely, and not to mention the tower taking possibilities. You just throw Astral Spirit down. Anybody comes in, you stun them. You just take the tower so easily. Anyway, so as we said, these guys most likely going to pick up. Um, you know what? Troll Warlord is really, really good here as well. You know, clear out the illusions. You know, you kill these guys really, really quickly. Morphling is too late. Like, if they hadn't picked Alchemist, I think Morphling would have been pretty damn decent. Wow, nine seconds left. That is a weird pick, honestly. Like, these guys lost. <laughs> Faceless just lost right here, I think, in the picks. Um, I just think that the tower taking... I think after about... As soon as these guys, as soon as the supports don't need to help out Naga anymore, I think this game is just over. Um, because then they start taking down towers, and there's literally nothing these guys... Oh, okay, so these guys start... Okay, there's an axe standing in the back with his blink dagger, which he'll probably have by 12, 15 min 12 to 15 minutes, right? So that's all, all pre-Naga Radiance. Right, this guy's got everything by 15 minutes that he needs to push towers down. These two don't need anything. <laughs> you know, so let's say 15 minutes in, Axe standing behind the team with a blink dagger. Now, what the hell are these four heroes, you know, going to do to prevent, to stop those towers going in, in the line, in a straight bloody line? Sure, there can, there can be a ship, and that's it. You've got a torum, you've got a ship, and that is literally it. There's nothing else that can happen. Uh, if any sort of initiation starts to happen, that's a blink. Blink in, call, and then Terrorblade just shreds those people, not to mention a static storm on top of the, whoever is in the front, who is already called, not to mention, and on, uh, okay, yeah, it's, it's, this guy is completely useless, um, defending towers. I just feel that, I just feel that OG needs to, sorry, not OG, Faceless would have to pull a miracle in the early laning stage to be able to um, get anything done. But what I want to do, is I want to look at this game from the player perspective of the mid laner. Who actually I can't do it. Okay, total physical damage done to hero at game end uh, is definitely this guy. Uh, player with the highest total magic or pure dormant damage done to magic or pure magic or pure. okay, that's Naga. Uh, that's Naga. Um, will a tower be denied? I think so. Highest amount of physical damage a hero will do to another in the one hit. Who is Gunkai, I guess? Uh, I think I think this is a safe bet. Uh, I'll go with this one. Probably Terrorblade as well. Anyway, so who do I want to... I, I don't know. I don't play... I don't play any of these heroes in mid. Like, I don't play Alchemist these days. And I don't play Terrorblade. I think I might have to not do this i can't learn uh much from this game I, i'm not going to play alchemist i think alchemist is just shit in this patch no way no way am i going to play terrorblade in mid um all i'm if i watch this all i'm going to watch it for is to marvel at how amazing anna plays it i'm not going to know the ins and outs of playing terrorblade mid i guess i can watch axe in the jungle yeah axe how axe goes around I said, like, right away, right off the bat, I would start off with a Quelling Blade. Sorry, not a Quelling Blade. What's it called? Iron Talon. Iron Talon and Tango. But then again, you expect people to gank you in the pro games or high-level games. In our, in my games, I don't expect people to gank me. Very, very, like, one in ten um, games do people get... Oh, that's what's happening. They're going to put Axe in the safe lane against him, against uh, Bristleback. So where's your... Uh, that's why he's got a magic stick in the in the quick buy. And they're going to go with a tri-lane. Now, tri-lane against Tiny is already a really, really strong tri-lane. And then you've got a useless Kunkka level 1 and more or less a useless uh, CM because CM throws one spell, two spells, that's it. You're out of mana. You should, she would have a clarity, which they can potentially deny with a very cheap, cost-effective Astral Spirit. Oh god, this lane is going to go really badly. Anyway, so what are, what are we going to expect to see? We're going to expect to see Axe do some pulls. Um, not pulls, but rather, you know, aggro. Uh, aggro pulls. Get his level 3. Get a stick by that time. Once Axe is level 3, then he's going to start to look towards 
um, doing some massive amounts of damage to 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 what's his name, um, Bristleback. I just think that at the moment, yeah, he's just gonna get shredded. That's why you've got the bottle. He's not gonna use the bottle, right? I wouldn't have used the bottle. I would have taken a little bit more damage. Uh, yeah, he's waiting for the quill spray stacks to go off, go away. Uh, I'm gonna take two more, one more creep wave, two more, probably two more uh, quills, quill stacks, and then go and bottle up. Ooh, missed that last hit. It's so hard to last it as axe in the lane. I just find it extremely difficult because he spins at random times. There we go. All right, that was a safe, easy. Um, how do you say? Uh, Creep wave. All right, so he's gonna make a pull. I probably would have pulled a small camp because he had the time. But then again, I think this one has more value to it because you he, he you can't stack it anyway. So I don't know. A small camp would have been better, honestly. Uh, all he's doing is denying the creep wave. I don't know. Uh, probably should start doing this as well. I, obviously, he's he's correct to do that. But I would just just be looking to maximize my own farm. Um, because as an axe, level 3, what's, where's your second point and where's your point in call? Hey, he's holding on for battle. I don't know why. Okay, here we go. But he's not going to use it right now. Oh, he might have to. Ah, uh, sweetheart, yeah. Come on in, yes, sweetheart. Come on in. Come on in. Mummy's gone out. Oh my god, axe is going to die. Axe is dead. Axe is actually dead. X is dead. Oh lord. Yeah, that was that was a little bit of misplay. Yeah, probably X would not have died if he had gone over to the small camp to pull that one. Oh my god. A little bit of inefficiency and I wouldn't even you know, wouldn't even thought about that one. Um but yeah, that was just like got caught in a bad space situation. Because there's no creeps there, you can't call and spin a million times. You are level 3, plus it's ice, ice, ice. It's S4 though. You know, two legendary players. I mean, there we go, S4 is going to be able to kill. Nah, it's not. He's not, but he brought him down pretty damn low. And now he's got 9 stick charges. He should be able to use... I mean, I would have used those 9 stick charges right now. Because you do get the maximum value out of it right, right away. Um, but it looks like S4 is going to hold on to them because he wants to have those in a situation where, you know, you're close to dying and suddenly you can use them. But yeah, I think... I think that was just, like, huge. Like, it actually shouldn't have died at level 3 to Bristleback. I feel like it's just a poor positioning. Like, even right now, this is like... Oh, stick man. Oh, so close. I think this game is... Pretty much can't upload it. Wasted. Wasted my time with this one. Definitely.